Bernard Yeah, he, he uh, a little bit sore uh, per Nate yesterday, a little bit sore, but should be fine for the game. Yeah, um, you know, we'll see how, how Daquan does this week. Uh, Kair, it's good to have him back on the active. You know, we'll see how he continues to progress. Um, and uh, we go from there. So nothing really more to add right now, so on that. So. What's the update on Micah and AJ for a chance of playing this weekend? Yeah, both improving. Um, I, I, I honestly believe it's going to be one day at a time. and. Um, we'll just have to see where that goes as we get closer to, you know, really Nate and I are going to follow up um, today like we normally do anyway. Um, but uh, we've got a couple guys um, that we just need to make sure it's, you know, we follow up on day to day here. So. Hey, Sean, uh, you talked a lot about the, the rookie line. In Dalton's case, I know the passing numbers, there's been lots of attempts the last couple of weeks, but he really hasn't been a factor at all. Production wise, do you think maybe is he in that situation where you know you get to the end of the year and it's a little tougher for him? You know, I mean, he's uh, he's he's so tough. He's he's so mentally and physically tough. Um, I, I think I know what you're talking about, but at the same time, like he continues to push through um, because it is a long year. But he he when, when I talked to him about it, he's just like, come game time, he's ready to go. And so I don't think it's as much of a rookie rookie wall thing as it is just sometimes the ball find the ball finds you and sometimes it doesn't and um, there were a number of plays last week where he was the primary target and it got taken away so you know Josh had to go through his progression there so um, he's going to continue to be a big a big focus of our offense. Well, I think the tough too, Sean, is when the shorter passes. I, mean, I think I'll say a lot of us thought he's so athletic he would be able to start to deal with it. Has that been a little bit of a I don't know if it's a concern but he hasn't really made those plays downhill we thought we would see. Well, I mean, I think it's it's just how he fits right now into the overall offense, and then us continuing to get to know him and, and what he does best. And so, um, you know, listen, I know a lot was talked about about you know what he's going to do and this and that. Like, you know, he's a good player. The ball will find him. He's going to be fine. Um, I'm not worried about it. Yeah, and, and I think that's you know balancing that. Uh, to Sal's question, I think is is um, you know is a week to week situation there with you know who gets what reps and and, and so on and so forth. So uh, Dawson had a big catch, um, a couple catches, but one in particular that was big in that last drive uh, to win it last week. So um, you know I enjoy watching those two work and, and continue to get better. How important was it to get for Joe and? Well, yeah, I mean, I would give the entire team credit, including Joe and Josh, and uh, even beyond those guys. I mean, they, they did a great job, and, and I thought the team um, did a great job of being resilient and, and uh, staying together and um, finding a way to win. I mean, when, you, when, you, when you're minus three in the turnover differential, that's, that's a hard thing to overcome. And so that's, that's one thing for sure that we got to get straightened out um, because that, that, was not, that was not anywhere near what it needed to be. Sean, as a follow-up? Last week we were all crazy with James Cook for the game he had against Dallas. This week, and you touched on this in the past, how Josh sometimes will have to carry his team. How beneficial is that to go from one week to have Josh essentially stand out of the way like James Cook Cook and then have um, That was that was that was cute. <laughs> <laughs> and then have Josh do what he had to do um, at such a critical time um, Saturday. Yeah, I'm a bit thrown off right now. But I'll, I'll try and rally here. I'll try and rally. Um, no, I mean, it's, uh, it's just really um, the players that are needing to make the plays when their opportunity comes up, they're stepping up. And James, uh, the prior week, as you mentioned, John and then, and, then, and then Josh this past week, in particular on that last drive, and, um, you know, 
Dawson, Steph, Khalil, and, and I mean it's when the opportunities present themselves, you gotta you gotta make the plays, and, and uh, those guys are doing it. And that's, and that's a mindset too. Um, and credit to those guys. Sean, I know you take every opponent, every game <coughs> seriously, respect every opponent. How does losing to an opponent earlier in the season maybe even sharpen that focus the second time around? Well, I think you learn a lot going through uh, any game, um, let alone in this case a, a loss like it was um, um, several several weeks ago. And they're a good football team. As I've said before, records, you know, the NFL is up for grabs every week. Records do not matter. And, um, you know, you watch the game that, that, I, that we've watched, and, and they played a good football team in Denver and beat them. Um, and so I think they're playing good football. They're well coached, as we all know. And. Um, we have a lot of respect for, for what they've done here. Sean, there's no head coach that you've gone up against more than, than Bill Belichick. I think it's 15 times now. Um, how has he kind of molded you from a distance and trying to you know, kind of reach the apex that he has? Man, that's, uh, I mean, he's, he's accomplished so much. That's, I think, uh, most coaches, if not all coaches, are, um, you know, learning from Coach Belichick and then also, um, you know, trying to get to where he's been, right, for, for years. Um, and so, I mean, he's changed the game in a lot of ways, just, just speaking big picture league-wise. He's changed the game um, um, in a lot of ways. And, and I think the, the league um, has listened to some of his recommendations. He's an extremely smart person and um, does a great job in terms of um, taking his personnel on the field and, and making the most of of what he has, and, and um, I think you're seeing that with the way his team has developed this year. James, James in the locker room after said how much he he appreciated the trust you showed in him to go back to him after the fumble. How, how do you walk that line of knowing when, when not to, the delicate balance of the conversations there, the confidence and everything that goes into that when, when something like that happens? Well, I mean, you know, like I, I mentioned, I think after the game it was a uh, similar question about, you know, why I didn't take uh, the player, player two out, and you know, I think it when, when you go through things and you and you develop a relationship and you develop over the course, you, you develop a sample size. You build trust through that, and and so uh, one one bad play at that point, when you have a larger sample than you do when the player is young, um, and just a smaller sample size, it's it's a little bit of a different situation, right? So. Um, that being said, though, it is a very serious – when you're putting the ball on the ground, um, you know, that's a, that's a very serious situation. So um, he's very well aware of it, uh, as is Deontay and, and, uh, and Josh and just the three that happened last week. So we know that we cannot <clears> – <throat> it's not a sustainable formula to do that and win games. Knowing, what, knowing that the Dolphins were playing ball, what's your <clears throat> Uh, I'm trying to f win, win one game. That's really where we're at. Um, I'm not really focused on uh, watching the scoreboard. Uh, I'm just really into our process right now and um, trying to figure out a way to beat New England. And um, as I said, it was mentioned earlier by John, they beat us the first go around. So I just because some some teams actually have to <coughs> flash the score on the scoreboard. Do, do you know of any any, any rule here that, that you might have? I'm not aware. Yeah, I'm not aware of okay. the Bills' rule uh, of what the. Um, I, just didn't know. I know in 2017 I was getting updates. <laughs> <laughs> Sean, is it, Sean, since Steph is healthy, is there a different uh, reason behind why he had less snaps a couple weeks? Stephon. Stephon. Yeah. No, just just the ebb and flow of the game, and and um, you know sometimes that happens, especially late in the year. Sean, Sean. what have you seen from Von Miller that warrants the playing time that he continues to get? Well, you know you you. I understand where you're coming from on, on that, Josh. It's just, you know, with Vaughn, he, he, he'll flash here, flash there, and, you know, he's dealing with a lot, right? And, and uh, I commend him from just what he's been working through and, and the knee and, um, you know, it's, uh, you know, playing time is earned, and, and, and he knows that. So he continues to work hard at getting himself just right uh, to continue to improve. Sean, you talked about players that have stepped up in games, whether it was James or Khalil or Steph in those big moments. How have you seen Josh over the last month when the team was 6-6 six and six and kind of in that, that spot 
step up emotionally as a leader of this team? Because he's talked about how he's just trying to be himself, but he is trying to be more emotional, carry, wear his heart on his sleeve more. He says he thinks he's doing that more. Have you noticed that as a leader? I have, yeah. I mean, this is when you go through, when you share experiences, you're able to watch other people grow. They're able to watch you grow. Uh, in this case, we're able to see or watch our team grow collectively um, as one. And I think this team has started to come into its own and, and form its own identity. Um, and and that's, been, that's been fun to watch, quite honestly, and just guys um, really sharing their true personalities and, and their love for one another. And um, it's been fun to watch that develop over the last couple of weeks. Josh driving that in particular and his urgency, his, uh, his vulnerability, his, um, his leadership, as you said. And I think that's uh, usually as, as Josh goes, we go. That in the third quarter? Talk about the third quarter one, yeah. Scott, it kind of made the most of the opportunities, even though they maybe haven't been there every single week. How do you diagnose that and then figure out whether or not you want to get into more opportunities in your office? I've had a lot of people that hear about this. Yeah, I mean, um, I've said this before about, about Khalil. He does a great job of um, being him in terms of he's, he's trustworthy, he's consistent, he's uh, selfless in his approach, a great team player. I think if you pulled the locker room, I think you know most guys would say he's one of the one of their favorite guys in the locker room and on this team just because of how he carries himself and how he lives his life day in and day out. And that's that's why you see him making those key plays because um, when things break down, Josh knows where to find him and he's right where he needs to be and. I mean, another great play that probably does, it goes unmentioned from the game was, um, I think Steph was supposed to be on a play and Trent Sherfield comes in and, and runs a route that is usually Steph's route and, and um, knew, the, knew, knew the assignment, uh, knew the detail, and it was actually on the same play. And, um, and uh, I mean, that's, that's how you win games, right? I mean, it's not always the plays or maybe always the star players, but it's the, it's what happens in between the plays, it's how the plays are run. It's, it's, the, day, it's the daily approach. And, and um, I think when you have a group of guys that you know, really focus on just, just the process and not caring who gets the, the, you know, the recognition, and uh, that's when good things happen. And you're seeing that by the way the guys are playing and finishing plays and then finishing the game. I'm sorry? <clears throat> yeah, very, very impressive. Uh, Another defensive player that Coach Belichick uh, has developed, and um, like I said earlier, I mean he he does a great job developing the personnel that he has and putting them in the positions of strength, and then they they flourish because of because of that. Um, somewhat. I mean, it's that's probably a better question for them to be honest with you, but uh, he does move around from time to time. How do you assess the play of Leonard Fournette his first game for you guys on Saturday? Give me, give me that again. Leonard Fournette, just how do you assess his first game for you guys on Saturday? First game? Assess Leonard Fournette. Oh, Leonard Fournette, I got you. Okay, yeah, I'm sorry with this thing. Um, yeah, I thought he did a good job. Um, you know, he knows uh, he knows ball, and he knows not just his own position, but he knows um, football overall. And uh, certainly he's played a long time. He's had a great amount of success, and he, I think he's been a very good addition to our team. And um, for me personally, it's been good to get to know him a little bit, and and, um, and, you know, just um, I think his impact on our team, um, I know is on the field with one week, but it, it, uh, to me it, it's gone beyond that. Yeah, I think he's in a, he's in a good spot, and um, we'll see how he looks uh, today. All right, thanks, guys.